I'm Dan Shadell, the Executive Director of the United Way, and welcome to another edition of Community Talk right here on Enid TV. Uh, my guest today is Ken Rapp from the YMCA. That's right, the Denny Enid. Price Family YMCA. The Denny Price YMCA. So it's uh -huh. good to have you here, Ken. Well, hey, thanks for being thank, here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Man. Well, uh, Ken just got back from vacation, as you can see, the tan, yeah. and you know, he looks Sunburn. rest, relaxed, and <laughs> ready to go back to work. Uh -huh. Only for a short period of time, though, because Ken is going to be retiring this year, which after 36 just, years, after 36 years. And you said yeah. you only had 30 years of honey to do's yeah, to do honey. Do that's honey -do what I'm going to do first. You only do 30 retirement. years. What happened to the nine years prior? Because he's been married for 39 years. So. <laughs> oh, I used to be a little better. At oh, oh, okay. And so I got busy at the You y. got nine years in, but you, now you've got 30 years that saved yeah, up, I've right? Been a little negligent, I got you, you might say. Well, I tell you what, we're uh, going to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, YMCA and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the United Way's uh, kickoff because uh, mm -hmm. we're getting ready to kick off the campaign. Starts August 15th, runs through November 1st. So we hope that you will be engaged with the United Way and all of our partner agencies to help us raise $750,000. Wow. That goes right back into the community and serves you, your family, your friends, neighbors, uh, those that need a helping hand. Uh, we always like to say we help those uh, up and and out and of course they're getting a helping hand from our partner agencies like YMCA so how many uh, partner agencies we have 15, do we have now? 15, 15 partner agencies I know it's fluctuated right. up and down a little bit for years so yeah. we have 15 yep so it's really important that we hit that goal this year so mm -hmm. we're gonna do it with everyone's help but let's talk about the uh, YMCA and what uh -huh. you have happening there well always something going on at the Y right you know right now it's time to sign up for that sounds like, basketball. It sounds like it could be a slogan. Always something happening at the Always line. Some, hey, we'll have to adopt that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you're a Pee Wee uh, uh, football. A Pee Wee uh, basketball. basketball. Oh, basketball. Sign up, but okay. the flag football is getting ready to start here in a couple of weeks. Great. So that sign up is over. Okay. And, you know, sports is a big part of what we do at the Y. We got Pee Wee basketball uh, coming up, and that's for age three through second grade. Can you believe? Kids three, play basketball seven. at age three? No. <laughs> well, I could, I guess. My, my granddaughter's four. Uh -huh. I could see her dribbling a ball, but it'd be tough. It'd Those be balls tough. are big. Yeah. I mean, for but small kids. The goals are about this high. Oh, okay, okay. And the stands are full. I mean, grandma, I yeah. grandpa, Mom aunts, and dad. Yeah. uncles, yeah. brothers and sisters, because they're so cute. <laughs> They are so cute. So, so you're saying, do, do you break them up into different, uh, since they're different ages? Are you they bet. in different brackets? Then? Yeah, different brackets okay. and a lot of special rules as you go up. Uh, you know, the little three and four year, year olds, they stand on a spot that we put on the floor when they're on defense <laughs> with their hands up. And so, you know, oh, otherwise they just all converge on that oh, ball, yeah, you know. So imagine, the defense yeah. has to stand on a spot. Yeah. And so that gives the kids a little chance to pass the ball around, to dribble, and to shoot uh, uncontested. Wow. So, you know, there's a lot of special rules. Yeah, got it. And, uh, Sounds need, like fun, though. It, it is yeah. fun. And that's, you know, that's a small part, but a big part of what we do. And because we have United Way funds and because we raise dollars through the year through our own campaign, mm -hmm. We never turn anybody away that can't afford it. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, mm -hmm. is there a fee to register their kid? And to... There is a fee, but uh, uh, please, anybody that cannot afford to be at the, in sports at the Y or have any other program, or... we have scholarships okay. for uh, anybody and everybody. And uh, we just never want to turn in anybody right, away. Right. Right. Well, let's let's mm -hmm. uh, let's jump back a little bit further and mm -hmm. talk about Denny Denny Price. Denny Price. Yeah. We're named the Denny Price Family YMCA, and it was about the year 2001 mm -hmm. that Denny Price, who is very well known in the community, uh, liked by everybody that met him, uh, died on the basketball court at the Y. And it, most everybody knows that he had two sons that played professional basketball, Brent Price and Mark Price. But the boys were home that 4th of July in 2001. They asked their dad to come down and play uh, basketball. And uh, they were running up and down the court. He had a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> the boys, their family, and some other community uh, supporters uh, created a, an endowment in uh, his honor and in his name. And so our board of directors decided to 
uh, named the Y in his honor. honor yeah. uh, just a well-respected Christian individual that we thought would be a good fit for our YMCA. So then you're, uh, when you you look at your mission, your goals, the, mm -hmm. the culture in YMCA, mm -hmm. it's, it is a good fit. <laughs> it is. And so talk a little bit about mm -hmm. that culture uh, that you have yeah. there. Well, you know, we're a Christian organization, but we are non-denominational. <laughs> no, excuse me, denominational. Denominational, yeah. Everybody is welcome at the Y. And we're about helping people in the community. So whatever that need may be, you know, and, um, so with Danny Price and his uh, Christian outreach and his uh, reputation in the community, that fit really well because the YMCA has a long Christian heritage and our YMCA does honor that heritage. You have a number of focus areas, the youth development, social mm -hmm. responsibility, mm -hmm. healthy living, organizational mm -hmm. sustainability, and marketing and communication. So mm -hmm. those areas are key to your success and, and the direction that I guess you and the board mm -hmm. of directors are taking mm -hmm. the, uh, the why. In that. Well, exactly. You know, our cause, very simply stated, is to help our community. Mm -hmm. And we do that in three very distinct focused areas focus areas and that's through youth development through healthy living and through social responsibility and that's how we reach our community in those very three very distinct focused areas that's a good thing uh-huh that's a it, good thing so is. we appreciate it, all that you do yeah. in the community and well thank you and Enid does. it really is fortunate to have a YMCA it's mm -hmm. not owned by a national organization it was built and is run by local citizens and, you know, we do not receive uh, financial support from our national Y. They provide uh, support with respect to, you know, consulting and program training and things like that, much like, you know, our United Way is a, has a national connection. Right, right. membership with national, yeah. But uh, anyway, our, our, our Enid is, has really one of the nicest YMCAs, I believe, in the whole United States with respect to the size of our community. Mm -hmm. Great community support. Well, now, the, uh, the YMCA, now you guys have been in operation for how many years now? Well, in Enid, 1947, 1947. is when the Y was founded, wow. and in, 19, in Enid, and then in 1962. 47, so that's 70 years. It is. Right, are you celebrating uh, your anniversary this year? Well, we actually are doing a uh, somewhat of a celebration in December with a group of, uh, we're uh, bringing in and trying to have all of our living past board members come and we're gonna have a celebration dinner oh, right. in, yeah. uh, in early December this year. And we will be just uh, celebrating 70 years. That's great. And it was in 1962 that the current building was built, but we've done several additions and renovations through the years. Yeah, and I've, I've taken the tour of your, your facilities. Mm -hmm. I, I know I need to get down there and <coughs> work on a few things, but... Um, <laughs> we all do, yeah, we all but, do. Um, it's the, your facility is, is uh, very interesting how it's laid out. And you've got one area, I believe when I went in, uh, they were playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. So to share, share with uh, the audience a little uh -huh. bit about pickleball because yeah. that's, that's like a new craze, isn't it? I mean, it really is kind of a, a new sport. craze. You know, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in, uh, in America right now. And a lot of people still haven't heard about it. It really became popular in the retirement communities and now has filtered down to the, the general public. It just, uh, just loves it. It's an easy game to play. It's not too difficult to learn. Uh, and it's played cross court on a basketball court. So that gives you an idea of the relative size. Mm -hmm. And it's a net across there, kind of like a tennis net. And the ball that you use is about the size of a baseball, but it's a wiffle, wiffle ball, ball, plastic gotcha. wiffle yeah. ball. And the paddle is a hard paddle which is kind of like a big ping pong paddle. And uh, you can play singles, you can play doubles. And kind of like tennis, you serve cross court and then the action begins. Back, back and forth. Back and forth. Well, why, and, why do they call uh, it pickleball though? Well, some people Is say it, it was because, <laughs> no, it is because the guy that started the game, His that invented was it. No, no, his dog was named Pickles. <laughs> oh, and they say That's that, funny. 
you know, he would chase the ball. Uh -huh. And so they would holler at Pickles, bring the ball back. So it became pickleball. Uh, I now, gotcha. that's what some people say. Right. And there's another that. theory, but that's a good okay, one to stick right, with. Right. We'll, we'll stick with that one. <laughs> well, in the remaining few minutes, uh, mm -hmm. I did want to talk a little bit about United Way of Enid in Northwest Oklahoma. We've got uh, coming up the Battle of the Eras, and mm -hmm. you're not going to want to miss that. You want to join us down at the gazebo at the Garfield County Courthouse. That's the north side of the courthouse. And the Battle of the Eras is going to be an event where we have a band coming in called Squad Live, and they are going to be playing music, uh, 70s music at 7, 80s music at 8, and 90s music and beyond at 9. And uh, I hear they're want, a really great band. They are really a, a great performing band. They'll get you up and, and start dancing. And, and really, it's all about raising funds for the United Way to help our partner agencies. So there'll be text to, to give, there'll be text to donate, there'll be uh, square reader cards so they can mm -hmm. run credit cards. It's a free event. We just hope that you all join us and come down. And, and mm -hmm. what, uh, again, you had mentioned earlier, the United mm -hmm. Way funds and how you utilize those. Mm -hmm. how, does that, how does that impact you and your, uh, your budget? Well, uh, it is very much needed in order for us to be able to support the programs that we do for kids. It is mainly used for kids to keep it affordable for anybody in the community and to be able to give scholarships. Last year, over 600 youth scholarships were given. Wow. And, you know, as I was saying, we, you know, don't turn away anybody. And, you know, there's a real need in our community to be able to provide programs, not only for younger kids, but also for teenagers. Yeah. We have probably 1,100 teenagers that are members and uh, thankfully, they don't all come at once. <laughs> and you wouldn't on believe yeah. that, uh, well, can you imagine 1,100 teenagers? <laughs> but anyway, you go down to the Y in the evenings, and you'll be amazed at the teenagers that are playing basketball, lifting weights, and um, it's just a way to bring the whole community to get together. Yeah. And for the most part, they get along. Yeah, that's good. Well, <laughs> and, and so we use United Way uh, money to specifically uh, for helping kids okay. at the Y. Well, that's good, Ken. You know, again, you know, when you think about United Way mm -hmm. and talking about unity uh, mm -hmm. and talking about being united, mm -hmm. I think the, the great thing about United Way, when we're working together, we can raise more money together, I think, than we can individually uh, for, for the greater good of our community. And so well, I, I was going to say great, most yeah. people, I'll, be, I'll bet if you surveyed, most people in our community, they know somebody that is being helped by one of those 15 agencies. Yeah. I guarantee it. It might be the Red Cross that has helped somebody you know that maybe had a fire in their home. Yeah. It could be uh, maybe somebody that was in need of counseling, like at Youth and Family Services. Right. Uh, somebody you know that needed a place to stay because they were a victim of of uh, domestic abuse and they're staying over at the YWCA. Uh, I guarantee most everybody in the community knows somebody that has been helped by one of those 15 agencies. Yeah. I guarantee it. Can't thank our agencies enough for all the services they provide. But again, we would like to have you as a partner, as a member, uh, help the United Way uh, becoming uh, a great um, umbrella organization working with all of our partner agencies to help them to help people and that's what it's all about it's investing in our agencies to help others and um, it, it's a it's a good feeling and it's a great feeling it's a, and that's one of those things that you know you're doing a good thing and sowing good seeds in our community so thank Go you ahead. so much Ken for all that you well, do I want to thank you for joining us again on community talk and hope that you'll uh, stay with us and don't forget, uh, be a part of uh, the United Way as the campaign gets ready to kick off. Uh, the Battle of the Eras is going to be on Friday, September 8th. So join us down at the gazebo. We'll have food. We'll have fun, games. Uh, Ken's going to be bringing games. We'll have mm -hmm. all of our partner agencies there. Uh, it's just going to be a great night of uh, fun and living united and doing good things. So thanks so much. If you need more information about what's happening at the United Way, go to our website at www.unitedwayenid.org. Thanks. Hi, this is Carmen Ball. I'm the executive director at
Hedges Regional Speech and Hearing Center. We've been on East Randolph for over 50 years, and if you have any questions about hearing or speech for yourself or someone in, our, in your family, please give us a phone call. Watch for us on Community Talk. Take care. Welcome to Community Talk. I'm here with Candace Ream from Enid Noon Ambucks, and today we'll be discussing the Tour de Trikes and Twilight Criterion. Candace, please tell us a little bit more about Tour de Trikes. Well, Tour de Trikes is now in its 12th year as a fundraiser here in Enid, and this year we're going to be having the event on August 19th. It starts at 7.30 in the morning, and then we have the Twilight Criterion, which is the race around downtown that will actually be in the afternoon starting at 4.30. Okay, now who can attend this event? So anybody is welcome to come out to downtown and watch, obviously, the Criterion race. Uh, it's really actually very entertaining. You have people on bikes going 30, 35 miles an hour around those corners, so uh, people really get into it. So mm -hmm. definitely come out early and get your seat right around the curb if you want one. Um, as far as the Tour de Trikes portion, we love to have people come send us off. It actually kicks off at 7.30 in the morning. Um, but once it leaves the David Allen Memorial Ballpark, it's kind of all around the county. So we go from two miles to 13 to 26 to 42, all the way up to um, 100K. So we have people that are going to be out all over the county riding bikes all day long. Wow, so who are the riders? Do we have riders from all over the state and can anybody ride in this if they want to? Yes, anybody can ride and we get a lot of riders um, from all over Oklahoma and the surrounding states. So it's actually becoming quite a popular ride among cyclists and it's getting a reputation for kind of catering to our cyclists. So um, it's pretty much on a yearly rotation that a lot of people in the tri-state area get on. And anybody can ride. They can go to www.tourtotrikes.com, and it's T-R-Y-K-E-S, um, to register. And that's where you sign up and pick what ride you want and all that. Nice. So where did the name come from? Do you know? Yes. So Ina Noonan Books actually gives away trikes to uh, disabled citizens. Uh, they focus a lot on children's and vets. Um, basically to provide mobility to them. And so since we used the money we raised in the fundraiser to provide trikes, Tour de Trikes was kind of um, where that started. And actually, uh, Mike Stuber and Tim DeClerc are the two that came up with that. They kind of started this from the ground up and ran with it. Well, that's awesome. Um, now, is um, how about how many, like, is there a goal, like a certain number that you guys have in mind that you want to raise this year? I am always a little ambitious. <laughs> I would like to um, hit between 450 and 500. We've stayed between 350 and 400 the last few years, so I really want to jump on in and boost that number up. And that's number of riders. Yes. So how about dollar-wise? Do you know about how much money you're looking to raise through this event? Yes. Usually we raise anywhere between you know 15 20 thousand is kind of a consistent number for us and um i set my goal this year at 20. we had a slight drop off last year but we're trying to build everything back up and i think having the oklahoma free will event this year definitely helped mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time in a community this size with as many 5ks and fundraisers and things that we have it, it gets harder every year to compete you know, for sponsorship. So we're having to actually learn how to go outside of our community to get some more help for that. So the bulk of that money comes from the sponsorships or what, is it a combination of both? A bulk of the money does come from the sponsorships. We do um, bring in entry fees from the riders, but most of it comes from our local community sponsoring and everything from, I mean, I've had people come up and say, here's a $100 check, this is what I want to do, up to, you know, large businesses that want to give a larger donation. So it really and, is everybody coming together. And there are some in-kind donations as well, right? Absolutely. Um, after the ride, we feed all the riders, and so we usually have businesses that will give us um, supplies for the meal, um, actually the meat for the meal. And we also get donations of things to put in our rider bags. A lot of people that aren't familiar with cycling, 
uh, might not know when you register, you're supposed to kind of get a swag bag of all your goods. And so uh, we have businesses that give us the, give us items to put um, in there as well. And all of this has been a big learning. I am not a cyclist. So it's been a huge learning curve for me um, to kind of figure out this culture and kind of jump in because it's, um, it's kind of a monster of its own. And so there's little things that are expected that you have to know kind of what to give them. Yeah, so on that note, all of this work, being the chair for this huge fundraiser is all volunteer work, correct? Yes. Yes. And I, I yeah, it is. I, um, but I love this event for the simple fact of, I like watching everybody come together in our club, all the way up to the community that has come to expect this event. And um, we actually talked a little bit about maybe not continuing the event. And it was interesting to watch the community rise up and say, we want this. And so now we're getting close to the event and we're turning back and saying, we, Enid wants this event, we now need your help. Um, because it takes a lot of people. We have somebody directing traffic on every corner of the turn along the way. Um, we have to have people that are at rest stops making sure these riders have water and uh, carbohydrates to keep their energy up. So it really does take a lot of people. So it really is almost a community-wide event. Mm -hmm. I know Enid Young Professionals always is at a rest stop there for the riders, you know, if they need water or anything. And I know several other organizations are there too, helping out. Are you guys still looking for the, um, for like the rider bags? Are you still looking for donations for that? Or are you still taking sponsors too? Uh, we actually have had a couple people approach us about sponsorships and most of the things on our advertising and t-shirts uh, has already passed, but we have found opportunities for them to set up um, informational booths and things at the event to help with that. And uh, rider bags, we're actually filling those next week. And so Keegan Tui from NBC Bank is actually working on getting a few more things pulled together with that. So we do still have space, uh, but we've also been very blessed with people donating, so. Yeah. Um, also, um, I kind of lost my thought there, but I know we um, at the Central National Bank Center, we always like to include something in those rider bags because it's also a benefit for us because we can get information to them about upcoming events and we like to provide a discount if we're able to do that or something. So I know it's not only good for the riders and for the organization, but it's good for businesses here too, right? Absolutely. It's great advertising for these businesses, um, especially we have so many local people that ride in this event, which is kind of unique to these events. Usually you have the core people that travel around to all the events. But we actually have a huge local following. I mean, people that normally don't ride bikes show up and say, I'm gonna ride 40 miles and it's crazy. <laughs> um, and you see people out there who you're thinking, there's no way you could ride this far. You know, you're 80 something years old and they will just blow you away. Wow. And so it's really just neat to watch everybody kind of go together. Um, but it's a great opportunity to get your name out there. Nice. Um, so I know it raises a lot of money, hopefully 20000 this year, and I know that um, Ina Noon Ambuck's mission is to provide mobility to those with disabilities through their Amtraks. Now, I know Amtraks are pretty expensive. Do you know about how many Amtraks we're able to give away through just this, or this fundraiser alone? Well, your junior Amtraks start from like 300 and run up to 1000 and then your we, our bigger trikes go all the way up to 2000. So it really depends on the need. They actually have to file um, with a physical therapist and see what needs they are, and that depends on the trike. So, I mean, it really depends on what they need, but a minimum of 20. Well, that's great. Yeah, well, awesome. Um, is there anything else that you might want to add? No, I really just hope everybody comes out to watch the event. Um, like I said, the nighttime criterium is actually really interesting to ride. Not only are they going this fast around corners downtown, it's at nighttime. So it kind of adds that extra element. And um, a lot of times this is one of the last qualifiers before some of the state uh, rides come up. And so they really need points. So they really get after it. So it's, it's a good time. Well, good. So um, can you give us the day and the time and the location where, these, um, where this is going to be happening? Yes, it is going to be uh, Saturday, August 19th. The Tour de Trikes kicks off at 7.30 in the morning. The Twilight Criterium is around the square downtown at 4.30. And if you're interested in, in registering, you can go to www.tourdetrikes.com. Perfect. And then um, if anybody has any questions, maybe for Candice about either the tour or Enid Noon Ambux and its mission, 
um, or sponsorships or anything, um, what's your contact information? Yes, you can reach me directly, 580-977-6989, uh, or um, if you want to speak to me in person, I'm actually out at Northwestern here in Union. Great. Well, thank you very much, Candace. Thank you. All right. See ya. Hello, I'm Cliff Reporter of the Booker T. Washington Community Center, located at 800 South Fifth Street. Please come out and visit us in some of our programs, and please watch for us on Community Talk.